Jay, it's great to be back out here. You always got cool stuff in the shop. What, what you got today? Uh, this is kind of cool. This is uh, the first V8 aero engine. This was built uh, by Hispano Suiza. This is sort of the engine that won World War I. Uh, the uh, Germans were running big straight six Mercedes, big massive inline sixes. This was designed by a Swiss engineer named Mark Burkett. Uh, aluminum engine, uh, iron liners obviously, um, 330 horsepower, close to a thousand foot-pounds of torque, some what, crazy thing. What planes did they put it in? Uh, they put it in the Spod. They put it in the Spod, then the English built it under the, under the name Wolseley, and then uh, the Americans built it under Wright Martin. And you probably would recognize this engine if I cut half of it off, because what they used to do in the 30s, in the late 20s, and even up to the 40s, they would literally cut these engines in half and run four-cylinder midgets or sprint engines. Oh, oh yeah. So that's where it's a shame a lot of them got cut up, because they're just great, great engines. And the reason I have this is because back before World War I, when you wanted to go fast, you went to the biggest engine available, which was airplane engines. And since obviously there were no jets, airplane engines had a lot more in common with car engines because they were piston engines. And so, so you, you slammed them into yeah, a car. Yeah, you, you put them into a car, or you could lay them gently. <coughs> yes. <laughs> what kind of mechanic you are, I guess you could slam it in if you wanted to. Sorry, depending sorry. Depending on what kind of work you do. No, you wouldn't have done something like that, would you? Oh, well, I didn't do it, but it was done a long time ago. And what this is, is, uh, well, right over here, we have a Hispano Suiza car. Well, Come on over check here. Check it out. There it is right here. What you have here is a 1915 Hispano Suiza, and this was built to be, a, I guess, a high-speed land-speed car, maybe, just a good old race car. The chassis was dug out of the swamp in Australia. It's all <laughs> Hispano Suiza, the wheels, the brakes, uh, except, obviously, it has a, the aero engine in it, which is also Hispano Suiza. I'll show you right here. But this is an, it's a 1915 chassis? 1915 chassis. See, and the oh, engine yeah. just kind of fits right in there. I recognize that. In fact, uh, show you how much I love this engine. I painted it on my wall. Oh, yeah. Gosh, it fits in there pretty well. Yeah, it does fit in there. It does fit in there. And, uh, and being an airplane engine, everything's redundant. You've got twin mags. So it's, it's pretty reliable. So this is all aluminum body? All aluminum body. In fact, we'll uh, take it for a spin. I would, <laughs> no, that sounds good. Now, I would think that the, with a chassis that weighs this much, almost... It would hardly matter what sort of body you put on it, would it? Uh, the chassis's not that all heavy. Is that right? I mean, obviously, it's been heavily modified. This this chain mechanism? This chain here, are, uh, this is your brakes. You're kidding. This is basically a block and tackle type setup, which gives you a tremendous amount of power when you're going through these two uh, two gears. And they work. They work. Don't forget, this is there were no hydraulic brakes in 1950. No. In fact, there weren't any brakes in 1950. <laughs> <laughs> kind of an anchor. You'd throw yeah, it out if you yeah, want to stop. Yeah, basically. Well, uh... So want to go for a ride? Yeah, well, sure. All I mean, right. It looks like it might be a little loud. Is it a little loud? It's a little loud. Here, hop in. What sure. you do is just put one foot on the spring there and swing over. Oh, okay. Let's see, probably uh, this one here. Oop. I don't want to rock off my mic. There we go. I'm going to oh, move this. Cozy, isn't it? Right. That's a little cozy. First thing you got your, your pre oiler. You saw the accumulator. Right. Okay, now I see you hit that. See the needle moving? Oh, yeah. So that bladder is now forcing about a gallon of oil throughout the motor. Now, is that a volume or a, or a pressure gauge that's, that's moving there? That's a pressure gauge. Okay. That's a pressure gauge. Look at these here. See the left mag, turn your mags on. Running oil pumps. Fuel. Air compressors. Usually the air compressor off until we're running. These are backwards, it's pulled to, it's pushed to advance. Requires a lot of choke. You got a big motor. Contact. <laughs> Woo! Sounds good. It's an airplane. When I talk about cars roaring, sometimes it's more of a figure of speech. <laughs> Not so with this 1915 Hispano Suiza. With its monster airplane engine, Jay and I literally roared down the LA freeway. Most Hispano Suezas were built with six-cylinder engines. This particular car was the result of someone wanting to go much faster, hence the very big V8 aircraft engine.
You can tell that Jay loves driving these historic cars and seeing people's reaction. As luck would have it, we even got some attention from a couple of California's finest. <laughs> Oops. Now, I've been lucky enough to drive a few of Jay's cars. And I was thrilled when he offered to let me drive this monster, too. Man, that's a long nose. Woo! I'm driving! <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, it's fine. Talk about torque! Look how the whole car twists when I barely touch the throttle. In spite of Jay's expert coaching, it took a bit of getting used to this old-time so racer. For starters, it had a rather touchy throttle, the pedal for which was actually located between the clutch and brake. Plus, right-hand drive, but still right-hand shifting, with the shifter located outside the cockpit. It's a real three-way cruiser! And at the risk of besmirching the holy grail of automobiles, I thought the Hispano Sueza actually drove better than a Duesenberg, although with a considerably more raw and radical ride. So, it's a trip, but do you pick these cars based on the amount of damage they might do to my mustache? Yeah, that's basically what I <laughs> Whoa, Jay, what a trip. This thing is great. It's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. You're just, uh, you're just taxiing your whole right. That's what it is. Leno Air. You're just taxiing. <laughs> you're just taxiing, but it's great. Thanks a lot, man. Let's do it again sometime. Well, thanks. All right.